Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing a Linux distro that I've been wanting to take a look at for quite some time. Um, I'm actually really excited to take a look at Solus. Solus is an operating system that is designed for home computing. Every tweak enables us to deliver a cohesive computer experience. A blurb from their website here. Solus is an independent distro. It is not based on, you know, Debian or Arch or Gen2 or anything like that. They are completely independent. They maintain their own repos. They also have their own custom built desktop environment. You guys may be familiar with the Budgie desktop environment. I'm actually not that familiar with Budgie. I've reviewed one distribution on this channel before that used the Budgie desktop environment. That was the Ubuntu Budgie edition. and I really like the Budgie desktop environment. So I wanted to uh, review Solus mainly because of Budgie. I wanted to see Budgie in its native operating system if you will you know it was designed specifically for Solus. Solus comes in three editions the main flagship edition of course is Solus Budgie they also do Solus Gnome for the Gnome desktop and Solus Mate for those of you that want to use the Mate desktop environment. Uh, system requirements you need two gigs of USB drive space or blank DVD uh, for creating your live disk you need a minimum of 10 gigs of disk space, you need a minimum of 2 gigs of RAM, and you must have a 64-bit processor. There is no 32-bit ISOs for Solus. Alright, today I'm going to be installing Solus inside VirtualBox. So I've downloaded the ISO. I wait for it to, to load us into possibly a live environment, I'm not really sure what the install process for Solus will entail. Alright, and it looks like it's going to boot us directly into a live environment. It looks like this is our budgie desktop environment. On the desktop we have our install OS icon here. So let me click that and that should launch the install. Alright, and the installer is launched. Uh, the installer looks pretty slick. This might be the Calamares installer. It's got the same or a very similar layout to it. I'm really not positive what install, what installer they're using, but I'm going to go ahead and run through the install. English, United States for my language. Where am I? It wants to find my location automatically. I'll tick that on and go ahead and see if it finds where I'm at. It did. Uh, English US has been chosen for my keyboard layout. That's correct. And here is where it chose the time zone for me. It actually did choose the correct time zone here in the US. I'm in the central time zone. Uh, disk. Now here is where you would partition your drives if you needed to. I'm just going to give Solus the entire 15 gig hard drive of this virtual machine I created and that's what it's chosen as default is to automatically partition this empty disk and install a fresh copy of Solus. So I'm going to go with that. Advanced installation option, options. You have the op uh, option of using LVM, Logical Volume Management. I'm not going to tick that on. What name should this computer use on the network? So I'm just going to give the computer a name, Solus VBox. Uh, install a bootloader is ticked on by default. You really need to install a bootloader unless you have a real reason not to install a bootloader and you are an advanced user and know what you're doing. Uh, I can't think of any reason why you would ever install an operating system and not install a bootloader. So make sure you have that ticked on. All right, Solus is going to be my username. Solus is going to be my real name. I'm going to give this a simple password. And this user should have administrative capabilities that is ticked on. I'll let that uh, stay ticked on. I don't mind my uh, soulless username having root privileges and a, re a review of the user we just created the username is soulless he will have password he will have to use a password to log into the computer I like that he will have administrative capabilities so we can use uh, sudo and you know change the system when we need, need to with that user without having to change over to a root user all right language and region all of this is correct installation it's going to create a 1 gig swap and a 15 gig partition yeah that's that's cool 
uh, users. We already created our user system details. Yeah, all this looks good. I'm gonna click install. It's gonna warn me it's about to format the drive and write to the disk. I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna let the install run. It'll probably take I don't know five ten minutes for the installer to to complete. I'll be back. Okay, guys, the installer is completed. That was a super fast install. Uh, that installer may have taken five minutes, maybe. So let me reboot the machine and launch our freshly installed Solus. All right, now re rebooted the machine, and this is our freshly installed Solus. Let's see how long it takes for boot up time. All right, we got to a login manager very fast. Really quick boot up time. And let's we'll see how long it takes for our budgie desktop environment to load after we enter our password. And that was really quick, especially being the first time for logging in. A lot of times the very first time you log into your newly installed desktop environment. It takes a little longer than usual. I'm going to pause the video for a couple of minutes to uh, run some updates and also to try to get the VirtualBox guest editions installed to get a proper screen resolution for this review. I'll be right back. Okay guys, I'm back after about an hour. Uh, I ran an update. The update didn't take too long, five or ten minutes. There were about 300 packages to update, but it took me a long time to figure out how to get the VirtualBox guest editions installed in Solus. I will warn you guys that are going to try Solus out inside VirtualBox. It is missing some dependencies that are required by the VirtualBox guest editions. Uh, you need to install GCC. It's not installed by default in Solus. That's the C compiler, GCC. You also need to install Make. Uh, also, I could not get it to work with the current uh, Linux kernel, so I had to use the current uh, LTS Linux kernel to get the uh, VirtualBox guest editions to install properly. But anyway, on to the review. So I'm going to go through the menu here in the Budgie desktop environment and show you the programs installed by default on Solus. Alright, so under accessories we have our calculator, we have our file manager. Let's see what file manager they're using. Looks like uh, the standard file manager in GNOME, which is Nautilus. Let me see if I can find the about. Yep, files. And that is the GNOME files. That's Nautilus. Really nice file manager. I like Nautilus. Also under accessories we have gedit, which is the standard text editor in the GNOME desktop environment. So Budgie is uh, based off of GNOME, so they're using a lot of the GNOME utilities. Under graphics we have LibreOffice Draw, Internet, Firefox is our default browser, HexChat is our IRC client, Thunderbird is our mail client, and Transmission BitTorrent client for BitTorrents, that is a, a standard program in the GNOME desktop environment, the BitTorrent client. Under Office, we have our calendar, and then we have LibreOffice, Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer. Under Sound and Video, we have the GNOME MPV, and we have Rhythmbox, which is the standard music player in the GNOME desktop environment. Rhythmbox is a really nice music player. Really one of the highlights of the GNOME suite of programs. Under Sundry, we have iBus Preferences and Print Settings. Under System Settings, we have Background, Bluetooth, Color, Date and Time, Default Apps, Details, Displays, Hardware Drivers, Keyboard, Mouse and Pad, your standard, uh, you know, system settings. Under System Tools, we have our Budgie Desktop Settings. Let me open that. And I'm going to minimize this. We will come back to the Budgie Desktop Sessions, or our Desktop Settings. I want to look at that further. We have our decomp editor, gparted, which is our partition editor. Uh, VirtualBox is installed. I don't think VirtualBox was installed by default. I ended up installing it trying to get the uh, guest editions to work. I really didn't need to install that though. Uh, settings. This is okay. It's like the good home uh, settings. You know, you have all your various settings for background, display, uh, privacy, and all that. Also under System Tools we have our terminal, which should be the GNOME terminal. Let's see, about GNOME Terminal 3.26.1. The GNOME Terminal is a fine terminal. Under Universal Access we have Onboard, which is our on-screen keyboard. Uh, utilities, we have our Archive Manager for Zip, Unzip. We have our Disk Use, an 
usage analyzer, we have our disk utility document viewer for viewing PDFs and such, image viewer for viewing photos, we have password and keys, our screenshot utility, and our system monitor. Let me pull up the system monitor here. This looks like the GNOME system monitor. And if I look at resources, I have a six core CPU on my main machine. I gave this virtual machine two cores of that CPU. And it is not using a whole lot of it. This looks like it's hovering around 15% of those two cores. That's pretty good. Uh, compared to like GNOME 3 and KDE and Unity, this is actually pretty low CPU usage. So great job on that. Uh, Let's see, memory, it's using 840 megs at 5.7 gigs that I gave it. I would say that's about normal for something like Cinnamon or KDE. So, you know, for a modern desktop environment, that's pretty normal memory usage. CPU usage, though, it's a little lower than a lot of the others, so pretty good stuff there. All right, let's play around with some of the uh, customization options. Let's check out uh, changing the background. If I right-click on the desktop, it gives me our little menu here. And one of the options is change background. Let's see what kind of wallpapers they have installed by default. We have the option of changing the background or the lock screen. I'm going to change the background. And they have some pretty cool, uh, both uh, like nature photos and a little bit of uh, abstract art stuff going on here. This is pretty cool stuff. Yeah, really nice wallpapers by default. I like this. Let's see what kind of theming options we have here. Back to the budgie settings here. Under style we have our settings for our widgets, icons. It's using the papyrus icons. The only other icon set that it looks like it's in installed is the Adweta icon set, which is that hideous icon set that comes default in the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, we have options for fonts, windows, bottom panel, so I guess we can uh, adjust the panel at the bottom of the screen. Now, we also have options for our auto start session, so this is the programs that launch uh, when Budgie first launches. In the bottom right hand of the panel here, you have this little icon. If I click on that, that uh, brings up a lot of the uh, applets and notifications. Uh, you see our calendar here. Under notifications, we would have all, all of our notification messages here. Let me just click that to get rid of it. There was also some uh, session stuff at the bottom, you see. We could hit the power symbol there and log out of our session. Let's briefly discuss package management. Now, Solus is a rolling release distro. It is its, an independent distro, so it uses its own custom package manager, its own repos. Uh, they have their own software center here. The software center is very intuitive. You have, you know, categories. You can also just do a search for whatever program you want to look for. So Firefox is already installed, but if it wasn't, I could search for it. And you see Firefox comes up in our search results. We also have our settings here to do some various settings in the software center. For those of you that prefer to do uh, your package management stuff in the terminal, you can just launch a terminal and the package manager for Solus is EOPKG so to do you know your standard update would be sudo EOPKG up hit enter of course you're gonna have to give it a administrator password and then your update will run and everything's up to date on this system so that is basically a quick overview, Solus in a nutshell, and the Budgie desktop environment in, in a nutshell, which I must say I've been very impressed with the Budgie desktop environment. It is everything the GNOME 3 desktop environment should have been from the beginning. Beautiful, lightweight, fast. Uh, the Solus distro itself, I have no problems with it. Uh, independent distro. It looks like they're doing everything right. Their website is fantastic. Documentation is fantastic. I looked a little bit on their forums, particularly in the last hour or so when I was having problems getting the VirtualBox guest editions working. They have a, a pretty strong community behind them, friendly community. So uh, the install of Solus, A, the actual desktop environment, A+. Guys, give Solus a try. Peace.